Christ. So um, I'm really pleased actually to um, be lined up um, after his because I'm going to be referencing um, an earlier Wessex archaeology um, excavations from 20 years ago. So uh, my name is Clarissa Cooper and I'm the Community Archaeology Manager for Oxford Archaeology. Um, the focus of this presentation is the largest and one of the fastest growing new settlements in South Cambridgeshire. So this is uh, Camborn, it's about eight miles uh, west of Cambridge. To most residents, Camborn is a brand new um, sort of housing development um, in the middle of open farmland and looks outwardly to borrow a sense of identity and historic context. The name itself even borrows Cam from the River Cam in Cambridge and Bourne is a neighbouring sort of quintessential English village. Ten years after construction commenced, um, it was still being described as having an obvious lack of history, continuity of generations and a sense of belonging, um, and was criticised for having less reason for civic pride compared to the historic city of Cambridge and other villages. So, Camborne is sort of one of, uh, is a town of about 3,000 homes and was initially conceived in the 1980s to meet a growing demand for housing for workers in the city of Cambridge. Um, the excavation was undertaken by Wessex Archaeology uh, in the 1990s were at the time some of the largest uh, to have taken place in Britain. It had long been thought that the uh, sort of clay plateau west of Cambridge had not been inhabited until the medieval period um, and the early occupation had been concentrated along the, um, the valleys of the River Ouse. But Wessex um, unexpectedly found evidence for a thousand years of continuous settlement um, from the Iron Age through to the Saxon period in the Camborn area. So far from being a new town, Camborn does have a historic narrative of its own and as far from being um, a sort of new town, it is just the latest settlement following many years of inhabitation in the Bourne Valley. So this year marks 20 years since the very first residents moved into the new town of Camborne in 1999. And Oxford Archaeology are due to embark on a new phase of excavation in Camborne. So uh, the proposed West Camborne um, development is shown on the slide here. The town is expanding to the west and it's going to be doubling in size over the coming years. So in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about a project undertaken by Oxford Archaeology's East Office uh, near Cambridge in the years following an evaluation of the West Camborne uh, development with staff and students at Camborne Village College, which is the secondary school um, shown as being an island all of its own in the uh, West Camborne at present. So um, we've been asked to come up with a couple of, um, sort of pithy points with our presentations in this session. And there are two um, sort of main lessons that I've learned through doing this project that I'm going to highlight. So the first is how the, um, the demographic profile, social capital and social processes of new versus established populations are really different. And therefore approaches to public engagement need to adapt accordingly. The second point I'm going to emphasise is that public access to archives and the generation of engaging resources and interpretation is really key in building a meaningful narrative for new developments. That's what clients, stakeholders and the public really cling on to, not just the generation of raw data. So in the first years of Camborne, it was perhaps less well known for its archaeology than for unfortunately, petty crime, an exceptionally high birth rate, and what has become dubbed Newtown Blues. An investigation by Cambridgeshire Primary Care Trust in 2007 found a strong link between the mental ill health of residents in Camborne and the lack of social ties in, a, in an entirely new um, environment. This report recommended designing facilitated activities um, that would that people could take part in and join together with other households to build a strong and cohesive community. So it's not enough for people to be living in a place together, particularly a commuter 
town on the outskirts um, of a city where a lot of people are sort of commuting to to live. They need actually facilitated activities where they live to get involved in. Um, a workshop with the local stakeholders following this report um, concluded that social processes are as important or even more important than the physical environment in the well-being of a growing community and suggested that there needs to be things for people to do to get involved in that they value <coughs> besides sport. So I've just sort of highlighted this part of the report here. Um, in established communities it's often older people who provide social capital Social capital being the networks of relationships among people who live and work together and enable it to function effectively. But Camborne, being a new development, is, um, so it has a significantly different sort of demographic profile compared to established communities. There's a significantly younger population than the rest of the region, which had not been anticipated when the development was being designed and planned. So here's um, just a graph to show the demographic um, um, sort of profile of Camborne. And you see there's um, a sort of much higher proportion of um, people under the age of 16 and a high sort of bump there, um, sort of high proportion of people compared to the rest of South Cambridgeshire um, in the sort of childbearing years in the sort of 30s and 40s. So there's actually a lot of young families who have moved to, uh, to Camborne. So, this report and the subsequent um, sort of stakeholder workshop have both highlighted the key role that Campbell schools play in their community. They are one of the venues within a new settlement which allows the population to mix and interact, bridging between those in different social interest groups who may otherwise not come into contact. There are now four primary schools in Campbell and a secondary school hadn't originally been planned for um, the town, but one opened in 2013. Um, it's developed in the vision of Henry Morris's community schooling, um, like other village colleges in Cambridgeshire, and it's therefore designed and built as a hub for the whole community, adults and young people alike. So they have rooms for hire for uh, community groups, um, anyone within uh, the town there can make use of the library, there's a church congregation that meets there on Sundays. Um, this is where Oxford Archaeology comes in. Um, so OA East undertook the archaeological mitigation of the school site on the western edge of Camborne and subsequently were contracted in 2015 to do an evaluation of the proposed West Camborne development behind the school building. At that time there was a new head of history who uh, had just joined the school and very much thanks to his interest and cooperation every year seven student visited the dig and took part in a follow-on archaeology day with the team in the school. So the clients funded uh, this outreach and the production of a handling collection and several interpretation <coughs> boards for display in the school. And inspired by this developer-funded and contractor-led outreach, um, an after-school archaeology club formed um, at the school. And OA East, um, we've worked with them to successfully apply for funding for their very own archaeology project um, from what was then the Heritage Lottery Fund, now the National Lottery Heritage Fund, um, under their Young Roots um, grant scheme, which was particularly aimed at getting um, some younger people involved in heritage. Young people in Camborne just don't perceive it as a historic place. There's a lack of historic built environment. There's a lack of awareness of this um, sort of archaeology that took place um, before the town was built. Some of the design features in public spaces have been informed by the archaeology, but are, they're, detached from, they're detached from context and meaning. So in Lower Camborne, there's a play park which has depictions of Roman legionaries. To anyone in the know, this is a nod to the proximity of Camborne to the Roman um, sort of Ermine Street and the location of a Romano-British farmstead in Lower Camborne. But to anyone without this prior knowledge, the Roman theme seems as disconnected and unreal to Camborne as the nearby fictional Harry Potter-themed road names. <laughs> because that play park may as well have a Harry Potter wizarding theme without actually somebody making the connection between 
that being there and what had come previously. So previous excavations had taken place long before the students at Camborne Village College were even born. And in their eyes, are as much ancient history as the millennia-old remains found by the archaeologists 20 years ago. One of their ideas for our project was to be the first residents in Camborne to actually take part in an excavation. And in September 2017, we supervised a week-long excavation of a Romano British farmstead on land adjacent to their school. Um, and I've just got a gratuitous image of one of the context uh, sheets that one of the students did. This was a 13-year-old um, who picked it up amazingly. And they were really involved in the process and being archaeologists. Following the excavation, um, the students curated their own temporary pop-up museum at their school, so similar to the idea that uh, Gareth was proposing earlier. Um, and we hosted visits from the four local primary schools and opened to the public for two days. And if anything, this was a, a more popular and successful element of the project than the excavation because at this point, the students really took ownership of their discoveries. They took pride in showing what they had learned with other members of their community. They were the experts who had actually dug the artifacts that were on display. So this is an example of using, uh, of, of, of young people actually connecting with the past in a meaningful way and using it to create that social capital um, that is often missing in youth developments and making use of communal space, their own school, to bring people together, addressing some of those concerns raised in earlier reports. The pop-up museum also featured information and finds from Wessex Archaeology's earlier excavations. Wessex have a page dedicated to their excavations at Camborne on their website, including a free illustrated PDF publication, the one I've got in the hard copy in this image, period summaries, interpretation boards, a Flickr gallery of finds photographs and working shots. So as well as this wealth of online interpretation um, and resources that uh, the students could access and make use of, um, there was ready access to the material and uh, digital archive deposited with Cambridge <coughs> County Council. So small finds were loaned from their stores at the County Hall to put on display in our exhibition, and other bulk finds could have been recalled from Deep Store, the Cheshire Salt Mine, um, used by Cambridgeshire for storage. Um, so many developments involve different contractors working in the same place at different times, and it is our responsibility to generate archives and outputs which are accessible, which are engaging, and create a cohesive story for both current and future residents. One of the ways in which this project has tried to share archaeological discoveries with the residents of Camborne has been to produce an online interactive map. This is to pinpoint finds and features of interest which we intend to add to during uh, future excavations at West Camborne. The site is still a work in progress, but illustrates the scope for producing outputs which have potential to inform and interest local residents beyond our run-of-the-mill grey literature. So the project, I'm very happy to say, met and exceeded its aims of creating an opportunity for young people to investigate the archaeology of Camborne and for them to share their findings with their community. There's just a couple of the evaluation forms um, we had there. Um, but as with many public archaeology projects, um, it hasn't been without its problems, and I think it's important to, uh, to recognise and learn from these as well. Um, the project has taken longer to deliver than anticipated. Um, the head of history left the school, and there were issues transferring contact details to a new member of staff for the grant, and for them to actually pick up and get on speed with the, with the project. Um, there have been issues trying to host the website that Bish has been talking about, um, with communication with us and an external developer. So this is still a fixed term project um, reliant on external funding. And the West Camborne excavations didn't actually start in 2018 as anticipated. It has, however, uh, bridged some of the gap between the evaluation and the excavation. It's helped to cultivate local contacts in anticipation of maximizing the opportunities um, that we'll have once excavation gets underway. Um, and it's given residents a chance to take an active role in generating new knowledge and interest in the place where they live. 
So returning to the two lessons introduced at the start of the presentation, um, the approach to the presentation and community engagement at West uh, Camborne is going to obviously be very different um, because there's now an established community um, there. So this paper has tried to demonstrate that public engagement uh, requires an understanding of the demography, the social processes and the gatekeepers in new and rapidly evolving communities. And it's people who create a sense of place um, and identity and belonging, and because they're the ones who place significance on the past. So that can't be imposed by the design of the built environment. Um, but a proactive and collaborative approach to engaging people in a process of discovery and sharing can. So I'm just going to finish, just been prompted, um, with just an inspiring and a Affirming words of one of the history staff members at Camborne Village College. Um, she began as a newly qualified teacher um, at the school and she's now become the new head of history. Um, so for anyone who can't read that at the back, she says, um, a big fear I had working in a new school in a new settlement was the lack of local history. How naive I was. I'm proud of all our, uh, of all our students who proved me wrong. Next year I'll be teaching our local 2,000 year old history. And what better legacy from a project can you have than that? I'll just finish by saying um, thank you to everyone who's been involved in this project, and particularly to the students um, who uh, really made it worthwhile. And I'll finish with my contact details for anyone who wants to get in touch. Thank you.